due recently by a whole bunch of acrylic pouring supplies and now you're unsure about how to best use them? Do you want to see how paints are mixed and exactly what sort of consistency you should be going for? Welcome back guys, this is G and in our previous video we talked about the essential supplies you need to start your acrylic pouring journey. And I even provided you with a curated list on Amazon that you can check out right here. In this video, we're going to break down how to mix your paints, what sort of consistency you should be going for, and I'm going to show you a very interesting visual aid called the drip test. So now you've got your surface to paint on, and your paint and your pouring medium, but you're probably wondering what sort of recipe do you need. But before we jump into talking about recipes, let's first take a moment to explain paint consistency. Paint consistency is probably the biggest make it or break it factor in acrylic pouring. That's because paint consistency determines a lot of things like how much paints blend, uh, what paints will carry other paints on top of them and which ones will sink, and it also dictates how much the paint moves on the canvas. So if you've ever seen acrylic pour painting and you see nice, crisp, well-defined lines, I'm more than 95% sure that that recipe used thick paint. Ultimately, what this also means is that there are almost no techniques that are dependent on a specific product or brand. If you learn the science behind why these materials behave the way they do, you'll find that you can reproduce almost any technique with the materials that are available to you in your country. The best way to demonstrate this is, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the drip test. So let me show you what the drip test is. First, we're going to need to mix up batch paint. So for this experiment, you're going to need a cup, a spoon, and some acrylic paint. I'll also be using varnish and water for this recipe, but you can feel free to use float roll or whatever medium of choice. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with the thickest recipe, and for every additional column in the drip test, I will just be adding 10 drops of water using a little dripper. And the spoon is for both for stirring the mix and for also taking a, a quantity, a set quantity for each consistency of paint. So we're gonna mix this up, uh, put the recipe on screen for you. This is the one we're starting for and our very first set is going to be pillow paint. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna prop up this uh, wooden plaque at a 45 degree angle and use the spoon to scoop up a little bit of paint and let it drip from the top to the bottom. So we start with the pillow layer, and that's the thickest recipe you come across in acrylic pouring. Now, this by itself doesn't mean anything, but as we start to add 10 drops of water to this next one, you'll start to see the difference. Now, this consistency is, in terms of acrylic pouring techniques, the second column is the one you'd use for uh, something like a swipe or a rain pour. Following that, you're looking at things like a funnel pour, a uh, chain pull. This fourth one, you're getting closer to like a cloud pour and close to a Dutch pour. And then finally, this last one is pretty much a Dutch pour or a the base layer in a pearl pour. Now, do you see the difference in how fast they went down this plaque? This is essentially the drip test and it shows you paint consistency relative to each other. So hopefully you now have a better understanding of how to mix your paints and what your paint consistency should look like. And now it's time for your very first pour. In this next video, I'm going to show you three very easy techniques that you can try on your first painting. And I'll also show you how to varnish the finished product using a spray varnish or a liquid varnish. See you there.